This is my first landing on the moon, so which biome I land in? It's all gravy, right? So let's get some stuff building. I do have this Minmus flyby mission. Oh, booster! Absolutely! Jebediah is still having an awesome time despite being 12 days up here. Let's get you down. Hello, my name is Mike Aben, and welcome to my KSP campaign. This is the Moonar 2, which actually you saw me designing a couple of episodes ago, being lifted on the hammer booster in the R4 configuration. And we're just on our way into a standard parking orbit before planning our Moonar insertion. So the second use of this is the same booster that lifted Jeb up in the Onion 2 for his 12 days. 12 days, 12 day journey that he is closing in on the end of that. This is my largest booster to date, but I, I'm hoping this episode, one of my goals is to build something that can lift a little bit more. And uh, I don't know, Jebediah, is, are we going to get to Jebediah? How much time does Jeb have left in space? Oh, less than two days now for Jebediah. Jebediah's stress levels gone up at all. Let's see, onion two. Jebediah, Jebediah, Jebediah. Oh, his stress is up to a whole two percent. Radiation still at one percent. He is a hardy shade of green. Okay, let's turn this all off. All right, down to our single hammer. What else do I want to get done this episode? Oh yeah, the ascent script. I've been meaning. I've been meaning to get to this. I should start making some improvements, I think, to this KOS script. I'm happy with the way in which it ascends. That's not a problem for me. You know, a lot of people look and they see all of this stuff, uh, thinking that I'm doing something wrong, that I've, I'm too shallow, but I have tried different you know, when I, when I made this script originally, the profile a long time ago, I played with different, you know, whether to go up and, you know, um, and and have a high trajectory, not pitching over until you're high up and are coming in more shallow like this. And this is the most efficient I could get it. So I am more than happy with what we got right now. Well, we have met our target apoapsis. What I want to do is I want to improve this so that it'll start doing things like staging the fairing and deploying antennas and and that kind of stuff automatically for me rather than it kind of ends at that point. Also, at some point, um, let's stage this. Oh, oh, I had a smart part. There's a smart part. Hello, smart part. You did a good job. Didn't raise the antenna. Let's extend the antenna. <laughs> I had a smart part do it. I've forgotten that was there. Anyway, um, I've lost track of what I was talking about. <laughs> oh, we're still far away from Apoapsis. Oh, yes, the whole circularizing bit. I was waiting until I have maneuver nodes locked. And then I'll make a maneuver node execution script. And then that, in combination with the ascent script, I think should be able to make a nice go and then circularize type of script. But we gotta wait on the upgraded tracking station for that. All right, we are getting close to, not quite close to burn time yet. Well, I haven't started talking about what uh, the contract is for this mission. Well, as you can see here, the list of requirements is not a long one. We are to get down to the surface of the moon and recover or transmit some data. Well, we won't be recovering, this thing won't be coming home, but transmitting that is going to be the plan and this mission will be the highlight mission for this episode i usually plan on having a highlight mission towards the end of the episode in fact my original plan was for this mission to be at the end of the previous episode but the previous episode started to go a little bit long so here it is at the beginning of this episode but 
We still got other things going on. I gotta get into the VAB. I got a Mimmus flyby mission coming up. I gotta start thinking about designing that one. And as I mentioned a little while, I really want to get into building a bigger booster. Uh, I got struts and fuel lines and separatrons. I think I should be able to build something that uh, is a little bit more creative than what you've seen so far. Oh, a little overcooked, but that's okay. Okay, let's put this onto our north vector. Let's get the camera out of lock mode. There we go. <laughs> Let that thing catch some rays. All right, let's... Uh, Still got 239 meters per second left in the vehicle. Oh, I forgot, of course, I don't have maneuver nodes. So we've got to, let's turn everything off but us. There we go. All right, so we're heading towards the moon. Oh, we're gonna have to come around a fair bit. Okay. Once, well, this might be the last time, well, it's only the second time going to the moon, but almost for sure it'll be the last time doing this. Oh, 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 I got an alarm going off here. Seaplane is complete. Needs testing still. I'm playing, uh, you'll see this. It's not going to be this episode. Hopefully ne next time out, that, uh, Rescue contract where we got to rescue some Kerbals out of the sea. We will most certainly do that. All right, so the way to do this without maneuver notes is you want to have the moon just below Kerbin's horizon. So that's what makes this view particularly good. And once our vessel is right there as well, I'm saying that's it. So we're gonna go to here. We're gonna lock her onto prograde. That is definitely the wrong direction. And we are going to punch it. Okay, just do it. Of course, we can't lock on the prograde. I gotta steer. And we're going to go into our apoapsis is at... Oh! There we go. Could have done better with the staging there. <laughs> we're going to go into our apoapsis is up to 12,000 kilometers. Which is the altitude of the moon. There's the moon coming into view now. Running now on this first time using the Pug engine. Uh, the LV-303 Pug. Not 100% sure where the LV-303 Pug is coming from, but I like it. It really does strike me as kind of a mini poodle engine, so it's really nice for this thing. Very quiet. <laughs> Okay, that's good. All right, and 12,000 kilometers will get me a little bit past the moon's orbit. I'll show you what I mean. I'll t we'll take a look out here. Right, but th what that does is it gives you kind of some, some hang time out here. You spend more time out here hanging around uh, waiting for the moon to come and crash into you, which is exactly kind of what you want to do. So the script calls are when the Octo-1 goes in and out of the night side of Kerbin. It's programmed to turn off. Oh, here we go. Oh, again. A nice retrograde. Very nice. Now, here's what, I, here's what I'm questioning. Is... What do I got for science, by the way? Is this thing doing any science? Oh, it's got a thermometer... That's it, a thermometer and a Geiger counter. So that won't do anything until it's on the surface because I've already collected all the... Moon R1 did a good job of that kind of stuff here. Is it worth my time to bring this around to prograde? My guess is not. My guess is that the delta V that would be required to bring the periapsis across to the prograde side of the moon 
is more than it's worth. So, but what I am going to do is get and point myself partway between the radial in vector and the retrograde vector. And we're just going to bring our periapsis down nice and close. Maybe about 12 kilometers. That's good. Okay, back on the normal vector. All right, where is the moon? Hello, moon. Now, ooh, another thing to think about. Can I focus this on the moon? I should be able to. Do it this way, then. It wants to be that way. Focusing on the moon. Yeah, that's going to be a problem. Okay, I'm going to bring it around to the prograde side. <laughs> Oh, there's something to think about. Okay, let's uh, radially inwards, purely radially inwards. Let me start this and then we'll... Um, that would have been in the communication shadow. And it would not have been able to execute that node. Okay, we are now, we have now flipped our orbit around. Now I am burning radially out, technically, and I just want to get... I'm not entirely sure if I'm doing this in the most efficient way possible, but... I don't know. Where's prograde? Oh, it's a little late for that now, isn't it? No, 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 just keep doing what you're doing. All right, that's good. Back on normal. Yeah, if, if I burned, that would have been in the communication shadow, and I would have gotten the periapsis, and then I wouldn't have been able to do a circularization burn. Now, periapsis is in with communication range of Kerbin. I'm glad I noticed that. Okay, we are coming now towards the moon. We're going to be there in about an hour and a half. Don't want periapsis to get away. Want to bring my apoapsis down to about 12 kilometers. And this is working rather swimmingly, I think. Okay, okay a little more. That's good. That's beautiful. Okay, so put this on again, point it north. Catch some rays. Let's turn SAS off to conserve a little bit of electricity, though this thing won't consume a lot of electricity because none of the experiments are going to be running yet. Oh, why did it? There we go. But what I do have to think about is communication. We're going to go into the communication shadow pretty soon, but I think once I come around onto this side and once I have communication back, I'll be planning my descent. Uh, you know, where should I come down? These highlands are always nice in here. Let's see where I get my signal back. It's burning just nice and slow. That's nice. What kind of target for in this zone here? But clearly nothing... Um, There's nothing specific. There's no. Or this is my first landing on the moon. So which bio am I land in? It's all gravy, right? Now, one thing that I always find really helpful when doing landings on the moon, I do this on map, is having up being actually up. So for instance, right now I have the ground up on the nav ball. So I just got really used to having the blue as the up on the nav ball. I find everything intuitive and then the this f feels natural. <laughs> like what I see on the screen matches what's going on on the nav ball when I do this. and Because it's the same thing as what you get with planes and everything like that. And I think that was actually with all of the adventures I had trying to do powered landings back on Kerbin. Uh, you might recall I had a small powered lander. It was uncrewed trying to land near the um, 
trying to land near the monolith and I got into all I the looking at the footage I actually had it in this orientation and every single time I went to translate either left or right I was always going backwards because it was the reverse of what I'm used to so a little bit of thought put the birdie up blue up always makes things feel better now I could set Kerbal Engineer to give me like dealt uh, suicide burn information and time to impact information but to be honest nah, I'm not gonna do that this is a pretty and, and again I don't know with the tracking station where it is I like the idea of keeping the information coming at me relatively sparse I like the, okay no I'm gonna just punch punch it punch it punch it I do have horizontal speed so that is useful right here I'm gonna bring my horizontal speed pretty down to zero because I really kinda of like where I am rather than getting into this area it looks a little more cratery of course I can look at the nab ball too for this but this is nice because you can just watch the numbers and cut okay we are going very close to straight down now I should have looked straight down before I did that, shouldn't I have? <laughs> I think uh, we'll come to the edge of this crater. Should be okay. We are still five kilometers up. And still with over a thousand meters per second at Delta V, I am going to take a, um, a shot at doing a, a hop. Oh, I can just see my shadow now three and a half kilometers up so still got a long way to go down maybe I'll slow down a little bit I actually want to drift a little bit further away from this crater so I'm not bringing the oh whoa 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 I'm slowing down way too much that was not efficient wasn't watching my speed because I was talking about that I still want to drift a little bit of... I don't want to drift towards this crater but I think I'm okay where I'm coming down We are over the Midlands, according to Kerbal Engineer. Okay, let's start really thinking about this and slowing down. Okay. All right, 500 meters to go. Whoa, slowing down too much again. The engine's more powerful than I think it is. I, I thought I was going to have an issue with thrust to weight ratio a bit for some reason, but clearly that's not the case. Boy, we're coming down gentle. Maybe it feels so gentle because of all the times I've been struggling with Kerbin. Oh, I could have nerfed this engine quite a bit. engines that was exciting with very little drama all right we've done it we've collecting some science we should be so the contract here is complete we can delete this mission contract so get rid of that but we should be seeing ourselves oh I'm still on poor Jeb uh, moon R2 sitting on the moon we should be definitely collecting data. Look at all of that science going away. We have a telemetry report. We have a radiation scan and we have a temperature scan. All of our sciencey gizmos all doing their thing. Uh, how long is all this stuff going to take? Because I really, really, this is going to take seven and a half minutes for the radiation scan. This is going to take a minute and a half temperature and telemetry is already done <laughs> so it's just got to transmit it all away 
But what I'm thinking about, if I could hop into this crater, like to me, I'm wondering if we looking at one of the sort of Highland or Midland craters, I'm honestly thinking of hopping into this crater, it just might be a different biome. But clearly we're not going to do anything until we are, yeah, I got 903 meters per second left. So there's no harm doing it because once this thing is finished transmitting all this data, why don't I do some time warping for goodness sakes? Um, no electricity issues. Once it's done transmitting all this data, then uh, it really can't do much of anything anymore. Oh, wow, the data transmission is so slow. You know what? Oh, it's going to take an hour and then not even getting into... Okay, you know what? What do we got happening in other places? Because I wouldn't mind. Ugly test vehicle is ready, so it can be rolled out. Space plane hangar, the seaplane's ready. I really do need to get a couple more things going in the uh, VAB. Where's Jeb sitting at right now? Jeb is done in just a couple of hours. So you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking of dealing with a whole lot of other things. We'll get back to this afterwards. And then see if we can not get this into a different biome. So we'll start off with the Octo-5 Mite experiment, which was inserted in its orbit last episode, has now completed all of the high altitude mite science that it can collect. So we're going to circularize it in a low orbit where the mite experiment is biome specific and it'll continue along going over different biomes, uh, still collecting science. And then, well, I don't know, why don't we see if we cannot clean up our skies a bit in the tracking station. I'm not sure if you've been noticing it or not, but every once in a while a little message will pop up that Octo-1 has done some bit of scripting stuff because every time it goes into the night side of Kerbin, it'll not transmit. That's uh, an option that's within Kerbalism to set up that kind of automation thing. Uh, it's getting kind of annoying. I mean, I could go to it and just kind of turn it off, but I think by this point, if this were a real orbit, it would have decayed and be gone. <laughs> I get too picky, but I used to be really particular about not doing that kind of thing, but I'm really kind of want to keep. This is useless up here, Moonar 1. Moonar 1's in this high orbit after encountering the, after doing a flyby of the moon. But one of these days, it's going to encounter the moon again. And so just for, although it's doing absolutely nothing, just for giggles, it'll be fun to see what ends up being its final, final resting orbit. Okay, what else we got? Do I have debris floating around? I probably do. What about this? Moonar 2 debris. Oh, that's just from before. It has a pretty low periapsis. Eventually that would decay, right? Sure, there we go. Goodbye. <laughs> All right, that looks better. Let's get into mission control. Gather a crew report from just above Kerbin Shores. Because honestly, Jeb's up there right now. So that, that should just, that's trivial. It might happen automatically just in the background because the crew reports are happening automatically. All right, so let's get some stuff building. I do have this Minmus flyby mission. So we have to fly by Minmus. We got to get into low space. But then after that, we got to get out towards the sun. So we want to go round Minmus in a program. Oh, wait a minute. We're coming. It goes this way. <laughs> I'm moving my hands. Of course, you can't see that. I got to go around it in a prograde direction. So we just have to make sure about that. And after that, it should just kick out towards the sun. I'm budgeting in around 1,100 meters per second for this mission. That should be plenty to get to Mimis. Mimis is 920, I think, or something like that. Uh, and then that should give me plenty for doing any kind of maneuvering. Once I get my trajectory right with Mimis, the rest of it should just be gravity. That should be propelling it. So that should be easy. 
Uh, not too much to this probe. You've seen a number of my probes now. One new part here is the R-4 dumpling external fuel tanks. These are the things that look like basketballs here, though I did end up deciding to go with the silver motif for this particular craft, so they don't quite look like basketballs now, but I do really like them. These are, although the smallest tanks I have, I think they are the smallest tanks that are in the game. Anyway, this probe has 1,164 meters per second at Delta V, which should be plenty, and payload mass was 421 kilograms, so that should be easily within the uh, realms of the lifters that I have thus far created. And I didn't even test launch it or anything. I mean, I went into space and make sure all the little bits and bobs did work, but uh, test launching with these trusted boosters I'm not going to do anymore shouldn't be an issue. But I do need to build something else. Oh, booster! Absolutely! Oh my gosh! I got struts and fuel lines and separatrons and those three things really allow you to get a lot more creative in your designs okay we got to start with a core now i should have bigger fuel cans now i do i have these guys so that should be something maybe i don't know but the problem is of course engines my most powerful engine liquid engine my most powerful engine still the hammer with its uh, sea level thrust of almost 200 kilonewtons. My next one is the Valiant, which is 100 kilonewtons in a vacuum, which ain't great. And frankly, its thrust to weight ratio really sucks. But I got a lot of new structural parts. And with the fuel lines, you can control the fuel. So the whole idea is not to have these upper stage engines that are doing nothing. Um, until the lower stages are dropped away. Instead, you got all your engines all going all the time, and what you're doing is you're controlling which tanks get drained, and then as those tanks get empty, you can drop them away. And then you're making the most out of all of your engines. We call this asparagus stage, and I'm going to talk a lot more about it, I think, when I get to the actual mission that this thing will fly. Hopefully in the future. I don't have a mission for it. I just want to build the best thing that I can. And I ended up with something. I mean, you really have to play around and be f flexible in what, what you want. The key with this one was getting into the point six two five meter tanks for that central core. So it was thin but tall, and that gave me the space that I needed to put on some good big ass boosters on the side. I think I ended up with something that it, it definitely worked and I think aesthetically it didn't quite make my eyes bleed too badly. <laughs> In KSP you can strap together some pretty ridiculous monstrosities and I'm just not that big a fan of doing that kind of thing. Uh, I want to kind of pretend that, you know, this might actually be able to fly if this were the real world. Anyway, the proof of all of this, of course, is in the pudding. And in the end, this thing could lift 2.1 tons into low carbon orbit. That's 700 kilograms more than my previous record holder, the Hammer R4. So I christened this the Valiant 1-R2-2. <laughs> Maybe I'm getting a little bit carried away. And I did kind of get carried away. I spent a lot of time tweaking this thing. And uh, I, oh, I hope I get some use because I'm not that far away from unlocking really much, much better engines than what I have here. But I do want to use it at least once. So immediately after this, I got into modifying the Onion capsule, the uh, Onion 2 that Jeb is still up in space with right now, creating myself an Onion 3 that is capable of doing much, much, much more for me, but I soon realized that, oh my gosh, I am spending way too much time in the vehicle assembly building. This is going to get put to the side, a little bit of time go by, and get Jebediah back. All right, Jebediah, how are you doing? Are you still smiling here? Yes, Jebediah is still having an awesome time despite being 12 days up here. What are his stats saying to me here? Jebediah's stats. Here he is. He is 2% stressed. 
Two percent, Jeb. I don't know. Man. I think I'm still two percent stressed when I'm asleep. Alright. Uh, let's get you down. So, where are we? We are. We want to go to the Space Center. There we go. And, uh, yeah. So, let's get us... Again, I do not have trajectories working yet because I don't have tracking station upgraded though that will be pretty soon all right we're gonna oh I always find just to have a consistent place I always go to like where I'm lined up with the Woomerang the alternate launch site here to be a nice spot to do this from and oh, I want to make sure that, uh, let's see. Let's burn. Let's burn till we're at 45. I really want to land in the ocean. I think that should pretty much guarantee an ocean landing. Let's go to 40. You know, I think I should keep track of all this kind of stuff. I never do. And then I'll get trajectories, and I won't think about it anymore. Okay, that's good enough. All right. Uh, going back onto the normal vector in case that's upside downy. So let's check our staging, make sure nothing is goofy here. Uh, that stage is the capsule, and all this stuff is gone. And then uh, parachute, and those engines will be gone once we stage the capsule. So... Whoa, 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 we are in the atmosphere, so we shall stage. There goes that old business. We have no more SAS, so we'll turn that off. I did not check what Jeb's resources are now like. I should have really looked at that. He's got two days of food, a day of water and a day of oxygen that's enough to get him down to the bottom <laughs> all right it was just time warping I'm really curious how long Jeb is gonna need to recover from this every other mission I've done with a Kerbal it's been a week seven days in which they had to they got off before they were able to do their next mission thanks to the R&R mod but I think the longest of all of those missions was maybe a couple of hours We're not going to get to the KSC. I brought my periapsis too low again. So that's good to know. So it was about 40. Actually, it was more like 39.8 or something. But we're clearly going to end up in the wrong ocean. God, I have to put it like 50 or something. Anyway, whatever. It's such a blunt... Oh, yeah. The signal lost with the craft because of plasma blackouts anyway yeah with with this 12 day journey I'm really curious oh man we might end up landing in the deserts here I think it should be okay I might we might be able to do a crew report here I'm not sure I've ever had a Kerbal touchdown in the desert because I think Val when she came back from space I think she touched down in the water Oh, we never... I don't think it ever did the crew report thing. So... I might have messed that part up. Crew report over the shores. Shoot. Oh, that's as slow as it goes. And down we are. How are we doing there, Jebediah? Now, can we do a crew report? Collecting some kind of data. We are taking a crew report landed on the deserts. Awesome. See, I thought I thought I'd never had this happen. See, so messing up. Me 
messing this up is not exactly uh, messing up my descent has payoffs. It's gonna take a few whoops, a few minutes here. Oh, electric charge might be an issue. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We should be not transmitting. No transmitting allowed. Just realizing how much hard drive space we're using, too. I wonder why I didn't transmit any of this stuff. Oh, crew report flying highs. Yeah, of course. I thought these were space ones, but these are all, like, flying highs. And, oh, there's going to be a fair amount of science coming out of this. done our crew report one and done okay so we saw point eight science land of the desert okay can we do an EVA sure we can all right and we can do an EVA report somewhere Oop, and that's going to be a couple minutes as well. I like how Jeb's suit, I wonder what the data limit is on Deb, Jeb's suit. See, he's storing the data, so he must have some sort of hard drive built into his suit. Little, oh, well, anyway, he's done. I'm wondering, does it say how much data he's allowed to carry? There it is. He's got, no, that's how much he has. It doesn't have percent full, so maybe maybe he can carry unlimited data. All right, can you get you back inside, dear Jebediah? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh dear. This could be problematic. That is the hatch, right? Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> no. Oh, let's wait for it to roll around stupid ball capsule when it dips downwards can you grab it oh my gosh all right we might need to recover these separately <laughs> after which I think we have time for one more mission now you have seen this contract before I'm having some issues with it actually it was really an issue uh, I had two contracts on this thing last episode and the other one was more problematic this one really shouldn't be so bad uh, between this altitude and 55 kilometers and 60 kilometers I need between 440 meters per second and 1470 meters per second that is quite the um, range of of uh, well there we go <laughs> that is quite the velocity range but I think what I'm just going to do is kind of do kind of a normal-ish sort of ascent. As per usual, I did not test this. <laughs> um, do a kind of normal-ish sort of ascent, and uh, these are SRB, so I don't have control of throttle. But once I'm on to the upper stage, I will. This thing has enough delta V to get into orbit, so I should have... There we go. I should have um, enough if I'm to continue to adjust my speed on the way up. There we go. Okay, now velocity is increasing dramatically, so let's lower thrust. Oh yeah, I, I can okay, let's let's get apoapsis up. Just keep it on that. Gotta get up to 55 kilometers. I don't want to be going too fast, but I can go a lot faster than this. Okay, Apoapsis is at 47 kilometers, 50 kilometers, 55. Let's start slowing down. Oh, keep that on surface. I think that needs to be on surface. I'm suspecting. Doesn't flat out. Oh no, it doesn't flat out say that. Okay, but 
Let's keep it in this velocity range until we get to 55 kilometers. And oh, I can go faster still. Come on. As long as you don't go over to 1470, you're fine. My Apple is now over 70 kilometers, so I'm into space. Oh, I just, just cut it. Cut. There we go. We did it. Ah, uh, hooray. Okay, that's good. Uh, this contract can now be deleted, or that mission. All right, that's cool. Um, this is just going to crash. Oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot to check. How long does Jebediah have to rest for? Oh, it's still a week. 12 days in space and he's still just a week off. Okay. <laughs> I was really worried it was going to be longer. Okay. I'm now up to 71.4 science, but it's 90 science to unlock those bigger engines. That's really what I'm going to be shooting for. But my cash flow is doing well. So I decided to spend just over 112,000 curb bucks for upgrading the astronaut complex. This will give my Kerbals the ability to do EVAs in other places besides Kerbin's surface. Alright. Stuff is piling up in the space plane hangar, but Val has still got three days to go. The astronaut complex is going to take almost six days. The tracking station is still more than four days away. Okay, yeah, we got lots of stuff still coming, but you know, all of that is going to have to be for the next episode. In the meantime, I thank you for watching, and hope to see you again next time.